Okay, so section 1.3 is modeling with linear functions. That's basically just taking our linear functions and applying them to real life problems. So for example one, the graph shows the distance Allison hikes in x hours, write an equation of the line and interpret the slope. How long does it take Allison to hike 14 miles traveling at the same rate? So for slope, it's rise over run or change in y over change in x. So our rise, it's fortunate because we have two points that they have basically labeled for us. We have one at 0, 0, and then we have uh, 724, so we can easily see what the rise and the run is there. So if we're starting at y equals 0, we're going up to y equals 24.5, so that's our rise. And then we're starting at x equals 0, and our run is over to x equals 7. So that's our vertical change, the 24.5 right here, over our horizontal change over to 7. And then if we divide 24.5 divided by 7, we end up with 3.5. So that's our slope. So we can go ahead and set up an equation from that. We know our y-intercept's at 0. So if we put this in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, it'd be y equals our slope, so 3.5x. And then b is 0, so we don't have to include that. So from the graph, we can see that uh, x is representing hours or time, and y is representing our distance or our miles. And if slope is the change in uh, y over change in x, our slope is telling us her miles per hour, how many miles per hour that she's traveling. So if we want to figure out how long it's going to take her to uh, travel 14 miles, we need to substitute in 14 for miles and then evaluate for our time. So 14 equals 3.5 times x, because again it's asking how long it takes for her to travel 14 miles, so x should be our unknown. 14 equals 3.5x, divide both sides by 3.5. And then 14 divided by 3.5 is 4, so we end up with x equals 4 hours. For example 2, the graph shows the remaining balance y on a car loan after making x monthly payments. Write an equation of the line and interpret the slope and y-intercept. What is the remaining balance after 36 payments? So if we first want to find the slope. We can do so in a couple ways. Um, we can use that slope formula, which you probably remember as y1 minus y2, or y2 minus y1, doesn't really matter, over x1 minus x2, as long as these come from the same point and these come from the same point, are good. Or you can count it off from the graph also. So m, uh, or our slope, again, either y1 minus y2 or x1 minus x2, or I don't know, you may have seen it written as change in y over change in x. That little triangle delta just means the change. So you can literally count that from the graph if you have um, two points on there. So change in y from our first point to our second point from 18 down to 15. So we're going down 3. So negative 3 over our change in x. So we're going from x equals 0 to x equals 10. So from here to here, so over 10. And you would get that same exact slope if you substituted in these point values into the slope formula. So our slope is negative 3 tenths, and then our y-intercept is at 18, so we can say b equals 18, and then we can write an equation for this line. So y equals negative 3 tenths x plus 18. So we wrote the equation for the slope. That's telling us that we are, um, it, that's the rate that we're paying off the loan. So that's the rate that we're paying off the loan, the 18, our y-intercept, is the starting balance, obviously in thousands of dollars based on the way the graph is labeled. So our y-intercept is our starting balance. Y 
y-intercept is our starting balance and then the slope is the rate that we pay it off. If we want to find the remaining balance after 36 payments. So we could see on the graph that <coughs> that um, X is represented or a number of payments is represented by X. So if we want to figure out what the remaining balance is after 36 payments. That means that X equals 36 and we have to subst that, substitute that into the equation um, and evaluate it there. So we'll say X equals 36. Our equation was y equals negative 3 tenths x, so y equals negative 3 tenths times 36, and then plus 18. So negative 3 tenths times 36 is negative 10.8 plus 18, and then negative 10.8 plus 18 is 7.2. So because our y value is in terms of thousands of dollars, if we convert that 7.2 to like in thousands, that would be 7,200. So it's seven full thousands and then uh, two tenths of a thousand. For number three, uh, Kelly and Kim are both babysitters. Kelly charges a flat fee of $10 plus $6 per hour to babysit, and the table shows the total hourly fee that Kim charges to babysit. Who charges more per hour? Um, how many hours must Kim and Kelly babysit for their total fees to be the same? So for Kelly, we can write an equation for her really quick. So if she charges a flat rate of $10 and then $6 per hour, that flat rate is kind of like your y-intercept or your starting point, and the $6 per hour is a 6 that's being compounded or added to each hour. So y equals 6x plus 10. Again, because uh, she's getting paid $6 per hour, so however many hours that she works or what her x value is, 6 times that, and then plus her flat rate fee or her initial fee. And then for Kim, we can create an equation that represents her pay based off the table. So we can see from the table that each hour, she makes $4 more. So the difference between 22 and 26 is $4. And then again, four dollars to thirty, four dollars to thirty-four. However, that doesn't really tell us her initial fee um, because this is just based off when she works one hour. But in order to figure out her initial fee, we have to kind of think in terms of if she hasn't even worked any hours or if she's worked zero hours. So we have to work back up the table. So instead of adding four to go down the table, we're going to subtract four to go up the table. If I wanted to go up to basically like zero hours, I would subtract four from 22 and get $18. So that's her flat rate fee or her initial fee or like her basically y-intercept if we were to graph it. That's what she charges right away. So for Kim, her equation is y equals 4x plus 18. And now that we have the equations in front of us, it's pre pretty clear to see that Kelly charges more per hour, but her initial rate is cheaper. Kim charges less per hour. She only charges four compared to six, but she charges more as a flat rate fee initially. So Kelly charges more per hour. And then if we want to figure out how many hours they need to work for their fees to be the same, we have to we have to take their two equations <coughs> and set them equal to each other. So that'll tell us exactly when their pay is the same because y is representing like what their pay is after x amount of hours. If we want to figure out when the pay will be the same, we just set 6x plus 10 equal to 4x plus 18. So 6x plus 10 equals 4x plus 18. 
and then we can solve that equation. So let's get our x's on the same side. I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. And then I have to keep that lined up with my 6x because those are like terms. So 6x minus 4x is 2x plus 10 equals 18. Subtract over my 10. Get 2x equals 8. And then if 2x equals 8, that means that x equals 4. So at 4 hours, they make the same amount of money. And sometimes with problems like this, you can just kind of like count up in your head or off to the side or on the table. Um, but sometimes it is a little bit trickier, especially if you if they were like working longer hours and stuff like that before it was even. And then example four, the cost of parking in a parking garage in Chicago is represented by the equation y equals 15x plus 20, where y is the total cost in dollars and x is the time in hours. The table shows the total cost to park in a parking garage in Denver. Which city's parking garage charges more per hour and how much more? After how many hours would parking in both cities cost the same? So we have Chicago, that's y equals 15x plus 20 and we have a table for Denver. So I'm gonna set up an equation for Denver just so we can compare them more closely. And then once, we'll be, once we do that, we'll be able to find when they charge the same. So in order to create an equation, we need the y-intercept. And in the problem above, we had to kind of climb up the table to find that initial fee that became our y-intercept. Another thing is, um, if you're looking at a table, the y-intercept occurs wherever x is zero. Because if we think about a graph, a y-intercept is wherever x is zero, it's anywhere on this point. So like we climbed up the table to get up to 18, our x value also went up to zero, we just didn't write it. So we can do that same thing here. Um, so we can climb backwards on our table in order to find our y-intercept or our y when x equals zero. So we can see that when we go up our table, it increases by 8 every time. And then if I go down my table, I have to subtract 8. So to go down my table, I have to subtract 8. So I'm just going to extend the table off to the left so we can kind of see it a little bit better. And I'm going to count backwards to x equals 1 and x equals 0. Because again, anywhere on the table where x equals 0, that'll tell us our y-intercept. And I want that to set up the equation. So if I take 43 and I go down and subtract 8, that would be 35. And then if I start at 35 and I go down 8, that's going to bring me to 27. And then because when we first looked at our table, we're increasing by 8 when x went up by 1. When we decrease by 8, x will go down by 1. So this gives us all the information that we need to set up the equation for Denver. So we can tell that our slope is 8 because as x goes up by 1, y or yeah, the y value or the cost goes up by 8, or that's like the charge that's getting added each hour is in increments of 8. So our equation is y equals 8x plus 27. And again, this slope is just our hourly rate. So depending on how many hours we're parked there, we add in a multiple of eight each time. And then our y-intercept is that flat rate fee or that initial cost, basically the cost that you, you're going to pay um, just as soon as you go into the parking garage. And then we have, I'm just going to rewrite that here, we have the equation for Chicago that was given to us y equals 15x plus 20. Sorry, those are kind of close. And now we can go ahead and compare the different values. So um, which city's parking garage charges more per hour and how much more? So we can see Chicago charges $7 more per hour. Again, that slope is the charge per hour. So Chicago charges $7 more per hour and then if we want to figure out how or after how many hours would parking in the same city or both cities cost the same I'm gonna do it kind of the math way um, some of you guys might have already seen 
uh, from the table and just like doing the math quickly with the Chicago equation. Uh, but in order to figure out when they have the same exact cost, the cost is represented by y. So we can just take, um, if we're saying the cost is the same, we want the y values to be the same, we need these two parts of the equation to be the same also, so we can set them equal to each other. So 15x plus 20 equals 8x plus 27. So this will get us the hours, the x, when the costs are the same. So in order to solve, I'm gonna get my x's on the same side. So subtract 8x from both sides, keep it lined up with the 15x because those are like terms. 15x minus 8x is 7x plus 20 equals 27. Subtract the 20 over, bring down the 7x. So 7x equals 7 and then divide both sides by 7 and you get x equals 1 hour. So again, this is probably one where you probably could have figured it out without setting up the equations, but obviously the higher value of x, the more valuable the equations become.